Hello and welcome to episode 207 of the ZA Tech Show, recorded on Monday night, 23 April. My name is Simon Dingle. Good to be back with you. Uh, last week was a bit of a dry spell for technology news, and this week would be the opposite of that, I think, is fair to say. So looking forward to it. Uh, let me introduce you to our panel of geeks for this evening. Stephen Ambrose is here from Strategy Works. Hi, how are you doing, Simon? Good and you, Stephen. Good, thanks. Are you all uh, launched out. out? Yeah, and I'm launched. Out. A lot it's of uh, events time, yeah. in the world of technology this oh, week. No doubt. None of which I've been to. I hear you've been a bit <laughs> scarce. We've missed you. Been no up one and to down eat the and snacks. All over the place. Yeah, well, been busy, busy man. But, you, know, you can tell us all about it. Dave Greenway is here. Greetings. From all over the place. I'm never oh, sure yeah. how to introduce you. Uh, yeah. From okay. Dave Greenway. From at Dave Greenway. <laughs> and yeah, that's the basis of all my operations. Well, you can find him on Twitter, clearly. <laughs> Apparently so. You can find him all over the world. So where shall Busy we begin? Man. I suppose uh, the thing today was um, iPad pricing being announced. That yep. was the thing. So We exactly now know what it's going to cost when it launches this Friday. And I don't think there were any surprises there. Um, it goes no from the 16 gig Wi-Fi at five grand up to eight three for the um, Wi-Fi 3G for the Wi-Fi 64, 3G yeah. 64 gig. Um, so a little bit more expensive than the previous one. Um, it was more expensive than their launch prices, but I think that's where they landed up after the pricing. It's increase. the same pricing yeah. before they decreased the pricing. Yeah, yeah, before they decreased yeah. the price. That was like, yeah, well, who knows? It's uh, cause forward exchange cover. That's how they. Right. justify their prices they take out four month forward exchange cover apparently yeah. so thanks america yeah look i'm i'm <laughs> just worried about supply um there's so they're releasing on friday i'm worried about how much is actually going to be in the marketplace as an actual reseller i don't think i'm going to get any of it so. well i think it's you know the same as as every time a new apple device comes out we uh we don't exactly get the lion's share of stock which is crazy because sales in South Africa are pretty massive. If you speak to anybody who tracks these things, they sell a hell of a lot of kits in South Africa. No, they sell a ton. The, the, the little bit that I've found out is that they've really planned it a lot better this time than last year. Okay. They've uh, guesstimated their stock a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And generally, globally, the supply has been a lot better than, uh, yeah, I than previous launches. Of There's been, in fact, the arbitrage guys in Hong Kong and Russia were getting into trouble. They couldn't offload their, their iPad 3s because the legitimate supply was coming in too quickly. Well, yeah. I was in Dubai the week after it uh, was available in the States, literally within days. Um, and I went to Dubai Mall, and all the shops that sell iPads pretty much had them. Um, I asked one of the shops if they had a 64 gig for a friend I was bringing it back for. And they said, no, but we'll get it within an hour. <laughs> but more telling was the prices. Were they pretty uh, they standard? Were, they were what you would expect to pay in the States. And so, you know, obviously, obviously there wasn't a supply and demand issue no. pushing prices up. I think one thing that's changed since Steve Jobs left the company um, is that the supply chain seems to have got better. Well, and I mean, Tim, that is yeah. Tim's yeah, Tim key the guy thing. Who did it. He built the supply yeah, chain. Yeah, he built the supply chain because they definitely are rolling out faster around the world yeah. and they seem to be rolling out in real so, quantity. So, Dave, since you um, since you sell these things, are you seeing a spike in demand for the iPad 3 or are guys a bit more meh about it this time? Uh, we had, from the day it was announced in the States, we had Oaks asking us, gray or not doesn't matter they take it we've had a waiting list since day one but compared to the ipad 2 launch i'd say exactly the same sort of demand i mean we've seen oaks uh, even the accessory side of things people who've bought overseas and who've come in i mean all of the suppliers pretty much culled off their accessories the minute that ipad 2 was out they right. started making ipad 3 and 2 compatible ones instead yeah and yeah we've actually started selling quite a few of them we've got corporate clients have bought there's a lot of there's still a hell of a lot of demand for the ipad 2 massive demand especially uh corporate wise now that the price is uh well they expect the price to have dropped because there's a new one yeah but um still massive demand especially for the two and the three is picking up in sort of your general mm. you know rich kid class of people who know exactly what they want right. and they're willing for mommy and daddy to pay more i'm seeing a lot of people who are more interested in buying ipad 2 at reduced prices because they don't yeah. see the points of the new one now, when you see that Retina display, it, yeah, it is I was just mighty gonna say. impressive. But it's, it's I don't very impressive when they're next to each other. Yes. 
Yeah, then it is like exactly. extremely impressive. Or next to anything, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the moment had, you've got something to compare yeah. it to, we had it one looks there pretty today. spectacular. We had one at the office today, and we were showing our accounts manager. We're like, look, this is the new iPad. And he's looking at it. He's like, what am I supposed to be doing with this? Like, what's different? And then like, I brought my iPad 2 out. And he's like, oh, that is better. And I'm like, oh, thanks. You know, that's really great to <laughs> no, tell well, me that. But, and yeah. there's big talk that the next gen of MacBooks will have retina displays. In well, fact, it was almost confirmed by, yeah, by a certain yeah. Intel employee. Yeah, but I wonder what that means for it means higher resolution screen not sure but yeah okay how much higher a lot higher double, double that well, we four currently times. yeah four double times. both ways yeah, yeah. So four times what we got if that's something i would be able to discern with my naked eyes absolutely think so. absolutely yeah. once you get used to you mm. you know what's interesting when you go from yeah, a really high back. res screen and you go back to a normal high res screen yeah you're right and, and things look fuzzy and the the text looks a little rough it makes a huge difference. You know yeah. what will be amazing is if you get that kind of resolution on the matte spec for the MacBook Pros yeah. that Apple still does on special order. That would look fairly that amazing. Would be that would be awesome, great, especially yeah. for professionals. You know, this is my first uh, glossy screen Mac, and I'm going to try and not do that again. No, glossy is not great for production and constant use. No. It's no. It, it, it makes movies and videos pop, but that's yeah. about all. Yeah. And then it, it dumps, gets tiresome. It dumps, it dumps stuff down. <laughs> that's what it does but you right? know what the problem is how can you own a Mac to create product for a higher resolution iPad Yeah. so that is why Good you're going to find that all the new Macs all the new computers and all the new screens coming out mm. are going to start pushing well, towards a, a, a much higher resolution and you've got to thank Apple happened. for that I think the 27 inch iMac probably has the same resolution as an entire like an, as an iPad except it's you know 27 inches yeah but um, the, yeah, you the resolution, the of the screen the same, is the same, but, then you, but the resolution yeah. or the pixels, the pixel per square yeah, inch, pixel density is yeah, completely off. What you want off. to yeah. see in iPad size, correct? Yes. Have that resolution at twenty-seven inches. Can with you imagine you. the quality? With you, I buy one. Yeah. So talking yeah. about spectacular screens, I see you carrying a brand new. Is that the HTC One? That's the new HTC One. And how are you finding it, it Stephen? Well, well, that's you know, two ones. We got the one. X and the one S here and in front you've of us. Got them both, because why not, right? Oh, well, absolutely. On review, from courtesy of HTC, and I must tell you something. We call the one X, which is their flagship, the emperor of Android. It is without doubt, right now, Hand it the over. best. Let me see. The best Android phone on the market, and it's better probably than the Galaxy Nexus. Yeah, much better. Really much okay. better screen, much faster, much more I'll be fluid. Honest, First impression is the screen looks about the same. It's the it's same not, size screen, it's, but it's much higher resolution. Well, that over there, firstly, is 720p, and the Galaxy Nexus is a pentile display. Yeah. Right. So the colors will be a little no, bit I more washed out. Technologically, they aren't, but I'm telling you what it looks like. Well, well, what is the difference? That's a pentile display. Yeah. Right. So I suppose you have to hold them next to each other. Yeah. It doesn't look nearly as good as the no. Nexus, though, if I'm yeah. honest. Steve, I'm talking mm. about the normal one. No, yeah. the next. Well, the Nexus has got a bigger screen, and it's a better screen than the S. Yeah. But the X screen is by far the best screen I've ever the seen. The sound has to be good. It's built by Beats. The camera we know is amazing. What's yeah. the battery life like? It has to have an Achilles heel sound. No, the, f the first four days I killed the battery by 3 o'clock. But the last couple of days that I've been so calming, calmed down up. a bit, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm getting to about 8, 9, 10 at night really? on one charge, which wow. is pretty damn good. That's better than pretty damn yeah. good. That's spectacular. It's that pentacle if you, processor. If you play lots of games, it just eats battery. If you take lots of pictures, it just eats battery. But if you do normal stuff, it's pretty and good. You I'm have Instagram for Android. <laughs> what a question. You know, it does look like an amazing phone. It's just Android's gone the sort of big phone route on the upper end. And yeah. These screens are too big for me. What is this? That's a 4.7 4. 4. inch. Yeah, yeah, you see. Yeah. The moment you get over four, things are getting a little bit crazy. That's uh, why I like the Lumia 800, the Nokia, is because it's, it's a got 3.7. a sane science screen. You and know my what? my hands aren't exactly small. You've been using the uh, Nexus for a while. And, I mean, you get used to the size screen. You do. And the Nexus is a clever shape. Yeah. So you kind of get used to... And, to and the One X I also like because it feels organic. It's got the same sort of polycarbonate body as the yeah, uh, Lumias, yeah. Lumias and, it, and it's quite nicely curved. But you can see it's really four, nice. But if I have to choose 4.3 is comfortable for me. Oh, which is interesting to get a bit silly. Because then we come to like the new Lumia, the 900. See, that's which, which is uh, bigger. That's 4.3. The, the Lumia yeah. 900 is a 4.3 and I actually had the pleasure of squeaking around with one Now you're day. a Lumia user every day, so how did uh, you find the 900? The nine, it's bigger and faster, which I like, and it's got a bigger battery. 
So, yeah. which uh, is nothing not to like. For. It's literally well. The biggest problem with the eight hundred was obviously the battery life until they released that little update that fixed it. I mean, it's it was, still not great. It's to not, be honest, it's, not, it's still not great. It's not brilliant, but I'm also still in the whole let me play games on you know Windows Phone platform and I screw around because of Xbox Live too much. So I don't generally get a full day, but I sit in front of my desk pretty much with a charger all the time. So, Well, I read an interesting deal. stat. The average smartphone user charges his phone twice a day. So it's, uh, not, yeah. it's not something that's unusual. I'd Unfortunately, that's, that's an big average screens, day, yeah. big processors, you, and if you use them heavily, you run out of juice. It's, yeah. a, it's a real pain. But the One S I managed to get a good day out of now, and the one the one S is about fifty percent better than the one X. So with when the one S is down to about twenty percent, the the X the S is still sitting at forty forty five. Hmm. So if you're looking for a more manageable size, great screen, not quite as good. Just don't put them next to each other, and a battery life that's pretty awesome in terms of almost a day and a half. Mm. Um, the One S is pretty good, and I like I like the way HTC skin Android. Their mm. new Sense, Sense 4, 4 yeah. is smooth. It's fast. It's, it's a lot simple. more light than three. Yeah, was. it doesn't have a million little things that you don't need. Yeah, but it's cool. I really enjoy it. I'm a the big fan. So HTC's back on top. Oh, yeah. absolutely. The I think very this interesting range thing makes a big difference. is that um, in the states, the LTE model of that One X. Because there's no chipset for LTE that uses the Tegra 3 yet. They no, actually put, a, the they put the dual core from the One core. S Correct. into it. Yeah. So we luck out by getting a quad-core processor here. You won't get it in the States. Um, how close are we coming to using anything near what this processor can do? At the moment, the programs can't actually do it. No, in fact, the benchmarks the show <laughs> that the dual core is better than the quad-core. Oh, really? Because the benchmarks can't even use, yeah. oh, utilize. Of there isn't a benchmark that fully Correct. benches the quad core. But you know where you see the difference is when you start switching between programs. And I had three games running and about five or six other things. Yeah. And the, the switch and the comeback was instantaneous. That's where you start seeing well, the processing where power. where this gets um, interesting is with Ubuntu for Android. Because yep. you've got a lot of spare resource now to throw at a desktop Correct. operating system that's knocking about on your Android device. And I... I think, I've, I mean, since the whole smartphone thing began, I think we all got the sense that that's the direction we were moving in, that this thing will have to eat our, our laptops eventually. Yeah. Well, this this, quad, this Tegra 3 chip is more powerful than most of the, if you go and buy a sort of sub 5,000 Rand computer today in the shops, the chipsets in there are far less powerful than this Tegra well, 3. Well, they're dual core, but are they really less? Yes, they are. They're running well, it between the 1.5 and 1.8 meg. Um, oh, so, okay, so that would be a quad core 1.5 gigahertz yeah. with a fifth running at 500 megahertz, and it's got I think it's dual it's core. GPU. It's dual core GPU, GPU as far so as I know. So if you're addressing there. all of its threads, then you've got pretty decent. It'll, it'll, it'll never it'll never leverage the GPU for no. actual processing until it comes to gaming. But the the interesting thing is that won't be as powerful as a desktop processor maybe a ulv processor it'll be better than but the and thing some is, is of the that, centrinos it yeah because be you can pump more you can pump more voltage through a yeah. desktop and laptop processor Absolutely. and that's why you'll get more power out of them Absolutely. and even if even if you can't i mean the laptop will still anyway look things here. are converging yeah, look, that's, that's no, a big given. Time. motorola atrix like third or fourth generation is going to be supremely supremely yeah. interesting and now that google owns motorola we're going to see them leveraging that whole i can't remember what they that I was actually reading well, that, the this is going to lead quite nicely into a discussion yeah. surrounding Ivy Bridge. But before we get there, I suppose we must quickly uh, talk about this, the new Samsung Galaxy, which we're starting to get sneak previews of. Sneaks or sneaking yeah. out. So well, it's the best-selling phone in Amazon on, S2. Uh, on in Amazon Germany website where they went live. Yeah. It's the best-selling device. Yeah. <laughs> no one's seen it. They don't no know what the specs it. are, but the they pre-orders are about the it. Yeah. And they well, buy the S2 was spectacularly popular. It yeah. was. Now, I, of course, I think if you're looking at Samsung Android device, well, I think if you're looking at any Android device, I still think the Galaxy Nexus is the one to get. And one of the reasons is because of the actual Android experience. Um, it's very vanilla. I must vanilla tell you, Android for the average, amazing. yeah, absolutely. For someone who's prepared to spend the time to geek it out and add all the things you need, you don't need to do much, but there are a couple yeah, of things you need to down and, and all of sorts of things. You know what? I find that touch, whiz, and sense and all of these interfaces break more than they fix no. with an Android phone. Okay, so I no, no. Agree. Old sense. Se- old, old sense, sense maybe. New brilliant. sense, not at all. They've yeah, really the they've really slicked it up nicely. And for the average guy, all the apps they've got, like their note-taking app, 
It, yeah. w- it talks to Evernote. It updates to Dropbox. You get just 23 such clever extra gigs of Dropbox oh, yeah, that's with thing. any one device. They yeah. give you 25 gig Dropbox accounts as soon for as you free. register it off right. the device for two so years. There's a lot of integration and a lot of clever stuff yeah. going on that make it a, an eminently usable thing without knowing anything. So for the average guy who wants a great phone, yeah. I, this is a, is a great uh, spin on I'll Android. spend more time with spend it. Spend some time and you'll see. See if it'll get see. me off my Galaxy but Nexus. I like the Galaxy Nexus. I think it's without doubt the best They've Android done something device to that in the screen. market. There's yeah, it's very smooth. You know, just saying that it uses X technology doesn't really tell yeah. you much because they put all sorts of clever engines on top of this stuff. No, they yeah. do. There's something going on in that Galaxy Nexus screen that I like a lot. It's got a sort of a matte hue to it. That it it all depends on how many layers they put into the screen and what yeah. layers they put. The different I, substrates that they put in. That's a significantly it. good phone. There's but no yeah. question. What about we can it. basically agree on is that Samsung still makes the best displays in the world because iPad Retina displays are still made by Samsung. All your iPhone displays are still made by Samsung. One I mean, or two LGs slipped in. There's a couple no, of LGs, LGs that are floating in, around. But that's only to keep up with demand. That's yeah, basically true. because Apple can't, you know, Samsung as big but as they are. But it's interesting that when LG, they do switch on the LG switch, the displays come out identical to the Samsung. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, well, that's well, a spec. Yeah, no, well, it also is testament to the technology Apple builds yeah. around the display. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Samsung's the supplier, um, but they can't get their own but Galaxy the spec, screens to the level correct. of the Retina display. The spec so is it Apple, so it's not Samsung. There's something else going on. Although anyway. they but also build the processors for them, so yeah, it's got to be something somewhere. <laughs> but look, <laughs> I think memory. the new and Samsung is going to be a spectacular phone. There's yeah. no question. Absolutely. Also, quad core, well, it's going to be brilliant. The, rum- the big rumor is that they're coming full HD. They're going to pump everyone and go straight over the top. And uh, listen, you, you've straight over rumors. the top, eh? Straight yeah. over the top. <laughs> straight over the top. Sorry, watching too much poker, hey? <laughs> All right, let's talk about Ivy Bridge. Uh, something I don't know much about. Well, I mean, the, there's the obvious stuff. It's, I mean, processors. Nobody really worries about. Um, it's not a selling raw point processing anymore, yeah. capacity anymore. But what they do worry about is size and con- power consumption. Absolutely. Because right? the two things we care about in this post PC era is and I disagree with anyway yeah, yeah me too I'm with PC, you on it's this it's a different PC yeah era. it's a different form factor PC <laughs> okay but anyway uh, the things we care about now or I care about are things like battery life right yeah because I, I the last processor I really consciously worried about buying was I, I have an Intel um, quad core 3 gigahertz extreme which is now an old chip. That's like a yeah. four-year-old chip. Five, no, yeah, four years old. That was the Core 2 Geo Quad Core, I think. The back. Core 2 Quad Extreme. Yeah, Core 2 like Quad that. Extreme, yeah. Anyway, it's a 3 gigahertz effectively quad core processor. Yeah. And there isn't a game that's going to use it completely. And that's a four-year-old processor. You yeah. know, GPU would... You'd you you know you'd run into barriers there before you run yeah, into yeah with crisis and whatnot <laughs> exactly <laughs> so so what you're more worried about now is the size and the power consumption which is where Ivy Bridge comes in actually and yeah. that's and those yeah. are the two things that Ivy Bridge really well there there are two amazing things that are coming out with Ivy Bridge the first thing really is it's the first 22 nanometer great number but it's such a tiny uh, die size so they've shrunk the size. Of the ch- of the die of the chip down to 22 nanometers, which is yeah. absolutely From insane. From 35, 35. Think, yeah, 35. Now, what's the standard. theoretical limit? 18. Hey? 18 is theoretical. Yeah, well, that's the what moment. they keep saying. Well, they didn't say they'd get below 45. Yeah. But anyway, they're now down to 22, and the benefit of that is they can pack a hell of a lot more transistors into the yeah. same so space. What, what was it? That yeah. they and said they can they use lower like, power. They were at like 900 million or something before, and they're now at like 1.5 billion, billion transistors per chip, which is, you know, that's Intel just doing the whole one keep other, up with Moore's Law thing. one other huge ben- thing that they've done, which is, uh, uh, this is real geek speak, because they ticked and they talked at the same time, which, is, <laughs> which has never been done before. In other words, they shrank the die and brought out a new transistor. And they also this chip has got the new 3D transistor, yes, yeah. which is quite an amazing technology because they can actually get well, a hell of a lot more power. By science of like three years, years ago, ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they shrunk it to 22 nanometer and made the chip itself, the, the transistors themselves 3D, Jeez, so they can get a lot more power. Really nerdy tonight, aren't you? Totally, oh, it's fantastic. But you can't talk but processors with that. No, you can't. Oh, you no, can't. but that look, you're well, some no, serious nerdy. Not at all. <laughs> well, this is the thing, and like um, Intel's going after AMD heavily because AMD did the whole uh, APU thing where they put the CPU and GPU on one die. Yes. And now this is the first one where the GPU is actually on the same die as the CPU. 
issue yes. with Intel as well. So it's um, Intel's yet to convince us of anything in the GPU department. Now look, <laughs> their new GPUs. Okay, here's the the real benefit for the average guy. You'll go out and buy, let's say, one of the new Ultrabooks using Ivy Bridge. It won't have a, a dedicated separate yeah. GPU, yeah. but it'll have a GPU built in by Intel, which will give you double the performance of the current generation at half the power. Yeah. So well, you'll get when three. You, put it like that, Steve. you see. <laughs> so so you can't go wrong. I mean, they're not the best GPUs. You're certainly going to play. It the won't best beat. Games. Yeah, it won't beat discrete graphics no. any day. I mean, those guys, their entire business is molded around a graphic experience that you won't get on a standard, you know, integrated CPU or integrated GPU. So yeah. there's, you can't beat it. But for the average Joe who's not going to be trying to crank out every last morsel of performance, should be all right. No what doubt. Do you need? No doubt. So um, it can do three full HD displays off the chip, mm. like really. What do now we need? Now, if you're an Ultrabook fan, this should be pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll see the first Alienware Ultrabook. Well, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I don't so. Know, well, eh? Dell, I don't Dell think own so. them, so you never know yeah. what's going to happen. I don't think so. It just you know what? The a lot of power into a very little space you can, at the moment. You yeah. can. GPU is still going to be a challenge. But well, the new generation will allow you to add a GPU well, if you want. Well, something like the Z series yeah. Vio from. Carry on. <laughs> Something like the Z series fire. <laughs> yeah. from Mr. Sony. Greenway is just running away. Of it. Processors are my thing. I know. This is my I know. I know. So I'll anyway, keep. the Z series uh, Vio from Sony with the external Correct. GPU that yeah. you can plug Correct. in. That's that. That was an interesting thing to play with, but it wasn't a great. Sorry, Dave. It wasn't a great idea. Sorry, Dave. But just you know, yeah, that was you Z were rolling away there. there. I'm sorry. It's it's fantastic. It's awesome. No, it is. Uh, if you're the watching the video. Yeah. <laughs> The bottom no, line is, this is, let me go. Let go. me go for five minutes, then you can talk to me. I'll talk other stuff. Okay, then you can worry about okay. the specs. The biggest, biggest improvement about Ivy Bridge, and where it's showing where you can go, is yeah. that we're going to land up with devices that can give us 10 hours plus battery life. And that, for the average user, is amazing. And there's a lot of tech in there, which Dave will explain to us in great detail, I'm sure, which <laughs> will allow you instant on, which is amazing especially if you're using SSDs, which Dave's getting soon. Um, and it, the whole experience of Ivy Bridge is going to change the way you inter interact with your computer because things right. are going to happen on a laptop the same way as you, you got used to it working on a tablet. Mm. So instant on, close it, come back three, four weeks later, computer starts up, you don't have to charge it up. So it's, it's a huge step forward in terms of processor in terms of the way that we interface with computers mm -hmm. and the way operating systems work so i think we're going to see big things and this is a, a significant step in that way and unfortunately for the others you mentioned that bunch they've uh, intel have gone like two generations ahead of anyone else currently so they've done some amazing stuff in a very short period of time right well so now you can talk specs I, and things Sorry, i actually Dave. wanted to just mention that you said uh, we won't beat discrete GPUs or whatever and you won't get them in Ultrabooks. If I'm not mistaken, I saw a 14-inch Ultrabook the other day that actually, it still fits into the Ultrabook uh, specs. So it's still less than 21 mils, I think, is the high end of it, if it's over 13 inches. Uh, it still has a discrete GPU and an optical drive. And it wow. fits into the Ultrabook class, which is showing that... Manufacturer Ooh. Lenovo. Um, I think it was Samsung. I think it's ASUS actually. Um, so it sounds I'll, like something ASUS would yeah. do. I, I, right. It's yeah. it's one of those kooky things where they've managed to beat Intel specs and still throw in everything. So yeah. it's a kitchen Must sink kind of notebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. And then uh, ASUS or Lenovo. Yeah. Well, the next one then is Haswell, which they showed at uh, IDF last year, which was the chip running Windows Seven off a. You know, solar panel and two light bulbs. Yes. So that's where power actually comes. That's the one that they're talking about. Ten times the battery life of Sandy Bridge, which is going to be an interesting one. That's nice. next year. Nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, they can't roll it out now because they have to recoup some R and D. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Chipzilla is it's coming. It's a crazy, crazy industry. Anyway, yeah. we need to move away from it because not everybody cares about the intricacies of the guts of their PC. So but I will the point tell you. Is, can smaller, I have? Can I have one last life. word? That's that's that side. But I managed to get hold of a, a test board, their latest Intel test board with their new quad core extreme. Okay. And I played a few games yesterday and I've never ever seen anything work this Have hard. Have you done any benchmarks? And this far. I didn't play too many I didn't do any benchmarks, but there's gonna be a ton. You'll see them all over the web yeah. from today. Because okay. it was under NDA till six o'clock tonight. 
All right. But uh, amazing. Absolutely so, incredible. So now that the NDA is lifted and everybody's allowed to know what they already knew about it, <laughs> Ivan Bridge, <laughs> uh, we can probably expect a refresh on the Mac front soon. Absolutely. For who care. Yeah. There's going to be a slew of, ref- of refreshes. Everyone's going to come out with a third gen chips. What yeah. do you, and, and before the show, we were chatting, Dave, and you speculated that the 13 inch MacBook Pro might be on its way out and they'll just go air. Yeah, well. The thing is, if you look at the chips that were released, there are only four mobile chips in the whole Ivy Bridge offering. They're all quad core. And if you look at the current uh, MacBook Pro lineup, 15s and 17s have quad core. Yeah, There's no. The 13 inch doesn't. Exactly. The 13s, dual core, R5s. I'll be surprised if they kill the 13 inch MacBook Pro just because it's their most popular model. See, I think they'd move that demand straight off onto the air. If um, they can the get new the price point down. Yeah, the big. Well, the new it's air still will, cheaper, have the, yeah. will have a more powerful chip now than yeah. the MacBook Pro. And the new GPU in the chip is yeah. better than the current MacBook Pro but has, with the GPU. The reason they sell so many is because they offer it on that uh, all those educational deals, the back-to-school stuff. Ah, that's, yes. where, that's where they mm. make all their demand. In fact, I was looking at um, their revenues are expected. I think this quarter is the back-to-school quarter or something, and they, they expect around 25% of their revenue from the MacBook line to be made up just from that. Mm. And if they stop offering this, the 13-inch Pro models, and just offer the 13-inch Airs and 11-inch Airs under that, and they bring if they bring the prices a bit closer to parity with the 13 inch models currently then there's there's no reason why the air won't take over uh, won't take over yeah the big one for me is whether they'll keep the the 17 inch pro apparently there's been very flagging demand on that it's not coming through as much as it should mm. and i I don't know if a 17-inch Pro is still something that's needed by the market or that they'd want to well, do. Well, you know, you, we, we mentioned the special order matte screens on the MacBook yeah. Pros earlier. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that as as Apple continues down this consumer path, that those are the kind of things that may well disappear. And the 17-inch MacBook yeah. Pro may be another fatality. You know, we've already seen Final Cut Pro or Final Cut X nerfed to the degree that professionals yeah. can't, can't use, use it, use it if they want to. And Adobe have and cleaned up. And now, if you if you're you know if you're sort of watching the money flow into Apple, you're going well. Who cares? We lose uh, a small amount of professional users, and we gain you know hundreds of thousands of consumer users. And I think that's you know it's it's a pity. And the the reason it's a pity is because there isn't an industry to pick up. You know, if you were if you were into serious video editing or you were pretty serious about design. PCs have always been competent, but let's be fair. No, Mac it came rules to, you where know, it comes Adobe to Adobe gave just a little bit extra, it felt like. <laughs> yeah. Um, and things like Final Cut Pro was an industry standard. And overnight, Apple's – and Apple's not a stupid company. They knew this would happen. And it's just like it's they're losing the professional market. They don't care. And even on the PC front, things are getting dumbed down pretty ridiculously yeah. with full-screen apps. And Well, if you look at, I think, the Mac Pro, the serious – daddy of video editing i think it's been 870 something days since it was refreshed yes i mean they're just they're not even on sandy bridge yeah. they're not even on i anything they're on old no, Xeon. i think they're that's on, the next fatality in the well, mac range well no here's the thing is that new xeon chips with um the new uh, so all the new ivy bridge stuff has been launched into the new xeon chips right. and that's probably going to be the last time they refresh mac pros i think um if they decide to kill the line, it'll be this line, and then they'll keep that going for three years or so, and keep the professionals, you know, placated and happy yeah. and whatnot, and then maybe it's kill funny it off how after there. Market tides ebb and flow, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The professionals but, are all going to go but, PC now, and then it'll be cool to have a PC because your graphic designer <laughs> friend uses it, yeah. and he's got all those kiff backgrounds like ninjas <laughs> eating donuts. I don't think so. I think the 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 Mac hold in the in the pro market is still huge. Yeah. Still know. huge, well, and the 17 inch is not going anywhere. I, I think the 15 inch, which is more consumer focused, will land up looking like an air. So I maybe, maybe, get rid maybe of the it's more of a software there, maybe, thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe Apple thing. goes, mm. okay, well, if you want to get pro, Adobe's there. Yeah. Correct. You know? Do you want to build Correct, a 17 Because I think they're more of a hardware company today, and uh, than a software and services. Because software takes huge, huge. Uh, investment so and 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 that's an interesting point. Though. I wonder mm. if we'll see them start to shed things like Logic and Aperture and probably. Well, they make or roll probably. it into the more consumer focused. Either that, or they and roll and it out into a new company or new like into a new business element or whatever. Well, because if you look, if but you look at something like the App Store, I mean, they make thirty percent of every sale in the App Store without doing any work. I mean, the guys yeah. come in, they do all the programming. There's a base there, and then they just well, take they've appified the most of their mass market yeah. product already. Yes. Where it was a, a seventy nine dollar package, it's now four dollars ninety nine per 
individual part. Microsoft's doing that so, as well with Office 365. Right. I mean, well, everyone's going that way. It's that a, leads us into a perfect uh, ex- segue. Seg- segue into yeah, what Adobe. Adobe are doing. Yeah. yeah. So, also, Adobe are doing exactly the so same thing. So talking about professional software, CS6 is on the way. I've just gotten used to 5.5 and now 6 well, is. And 6 is a rewrite yeah. from the ground up. Yeah, There's absolute no. <laughs> I was at a demo today at their launch, talking of all these launches, mm, yeah. and they showed us some of the stuff they can do. Yes. And some of the new features of CS6 um, and Photoshop, yeah. and it's absolutely awesome. You know, I I love I love Adobe products. I I, I learned to code Flash for my sons in you know Action Script, Flash. and I got into Flash. But when it was mm. still cool, when and Flash was still to cool, do so you know, and you know, nobody <laughs> likes Action Script. It's a little bit clumsy, but whatever. It made sh- stuff Does happen that job. you couldn't do any other way. But you know, I use Lightroom, and uh, I'm a Photoshop fan, and the problem is they've got the worst licensing model in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And now they've got this Adobe Cloud where it's $50 a month to license the full... Uh, uh, yeah, if you do it for a year. If yes. you pay if up it's front for well, a year. If it's That's month what I'm going to say. The problem, is, yeah. the problem is Eight. you have to do it for a year. And the other problem is I can't go and license a single piece of software. I can't say I just want to license no. Photoshop. Yeah, no. They'll tell you to go and use Photoshop Elements or something. And I'm going, guys, this, this isn't helping me. What creative possibly needs... Uh, a Dream professional photo a editing thing Adobe next CSS. to a professional site. No, they've actually addressed to that to some extent. They've come up with slightly different creative suites for different purposes. Sure, but you can only lease the big boy. Cor- oh, no, the big yeah. boy you, is, is... Sorry, the they've least. got four lease packages. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the point is you're always going to be paying for software you don't need with Adobe. Correct. They, they, That's their model. Bloat they, is what they do. As I said, their, yep. their accountants worked out their cash flow, and this is how they do it. Now, but it's still interesting that they've gone to cloud. I've been experimenting with tablets and software like Snapseed and and going, Snapseed's brilliant. You know what? I'm paying ten dollars for the software. It doesn't do nearly what Photoshop can. Okay. No, it doesn't. But it, what it does, and the little bit of what it does replicate from Photoshop, it does in such a better way and such a more intuitive way that I actually prefer processing. Well, Photoshop. With it. I think the complexity of Photoshop is what kills it. Sure, in but some now respect. the other thing is, guys who use Photoshop pay for plugins and they pay for filters and they. Now you're going, okay, so I, I want to do this with my photography. Let me get a really good app that does this kind of filtering because I'm only spending $1 to $10 every time I do this. So you build up a suite or five or, or six apps that, that plug all the holes you had with Photoshop. They don't necessarily have to be tablet apps. There's an explosion on the desktop of these very simple photo, photography editing applications as well. And I'm going, you know, on what planet would I rather pay Adobe $50 a month yeah. for things I don't need and sign up for a year where I can buy these apps, they do what I need them to. Sure, I'm not a professional I think in, photographer. I think in the production environment is where you'll see the big difference. For me and you, it makes no sense whatsoever. Well, I'm speaking to pros who, you know, who've sworn by Lightroom for the longest time who are starting and to And they're now starting to work in a different now. way. Well, Adobe has recognized that, and I think they've seen that their whole model of selling a two and a half thousand rands dollar, sorry, two and a half thousand dollar suite to anybody who wanted Photoshop is going away. And I think the first move into that is this $50 a month cloud service, which is quite clever because you yeah. can, if you prepare to pay $79 a month, you can buy it for one month only. Yeah. So if you have a need for everything, you and can buy it for one month. Snapseed is what, $10 once off. And yeah. then you've got it. And then you own it. But yep. the power of Snapseed well, is nowhere near as good as as Photoshop. Bringing ultimately. it to that, there's now Photoshop Touch. Don't know if you guys saw that, yes, that Adobe yeah. release, which is also $10. So, you know, even they're sort of cannibalizing slightly on their market Look, there. Look, they're not I mean, stupid. They know what's going on. Yeah. But I, I just think, I think they could, they could really own this market if they said, okay, guys, for, I would pay, I think a fair price for me because I don't use it heavily would be $10 a month for Photoshop. Correct. Just for Photoshop, yeah. For access and you to wouldn't Photoshop. and you wouldn't even 10, mind doing it. I would maybe it. consider fifteen twenty dollars at a maximum, um, if and then I'd probably force me, force me to use it more heavily. So let's say a maximum twenty dollars a month. I'm willing to do that just for Photoshop, right? And nothing else, yeah. And I want to be able to turn it on and off. So I want to be able to go. Okay, I've got a bunch of photography happening this month, or I've queued up a line of pro of of things that need to be sorted. Let me take it for a month or two and then turn it off again. World of Warcraft model, right? Absolutely. I, think, I, I honestly believe that's part of why World of Warcraft is has so gone successful. so huge. No, que- no question. And they give discounts for guys who want to buy three, six, 12 months. You know. Well, that's anyway. exactly what they're doing. They, they're sort of getting there. This is a bit of a hybrid. It's $49, yeah, which is a lot cheaper. I don't see reason why they can't go straight there. Well, anyway. you talk to them. But anyway, it's a I'm great... I'm a shareholder. I'm sure the shareholders <laughs> have lots of good reasons. <laughs> lots, yeah, lots of good reasons. But it was, it's a great release, and there's a lot of interesting stuff coming from Adobe. 
and it and they are big time pushing into HTML5. So Absolutely. so there's some incredible apps that you can get that are made through their product. So yeah. I was very impressed with the launch. We got very deep into stuff I really don't know about, mm. but it was it's impressive. They've got some good stuff, cool. and the pricing. Well, the one interesting thing is that price is that the whole uh, Creative Cloud is not coming to South Africa. Right. The cheapest system you can get is eight hundred and sixty dollars a year for a South African, which makes no sense. I mean, I just get an address in the U.S. and use it. Why would I pay eight hundred and sixty dollars for a much less, much smaller suite? That makes less than no sense. Yeah. yeah. So but I don't know where they're coming that from. No, most you of just what pay. Adobe does, you so. just pay a license <laughs> fee then. All the things we thought Microsoft was so stupid for doing ten years ago, Adobe, Adobe is still doing them up. Like you know. Uh, uh, Actually, I shouldn't say that because that's not nice. No. Mm. But anyway. I was going to say something. Yeah. But it's it's dumber than Microsoft's ever been on the software yeah. licensing front. And anyway. Mar Microsoft's actually turning around. They're not. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, they've culled, what did they used to have, like 17 different variations of Windows when you wanted to buy one and no one did what all those it was. Yeah, now there's did. four. We did. Now they're four. There's, yeah. So it's ba oh. <laughs> there's regular Windows 8, there's Pro, there's Enterprise for companies, which is the cool one that they announced today, which actually, so if you have like 25 machines and it downloads the update once and then doesn't download it on every single machine. Yeah. So it's got cool little things in that. that. And then they've got, Win R what's it, Windows RT? Which shouldn't be confused with WinRT, which is the design language oh, for man, Windows you know, 8. And yeah. no one said to that. Make that yeah. Four SKUs as complicated as no, 30. Yeah. No one How has about ever this said that name as well. Windows 8. Just give us Windows 8. Your one Windows 8. It does different stuff God. if you use it differently. Yeah. You know. Anyway, let's not bash Microsoft. It's too easy, firstly. And they are doing a lot of things right. I'm loving. Yeah. I'm loving the way Windows 8 is looking. I like what they're doing on mobile. Good on you, Microsoft. They're nailing. Everything with the Xbox, it just yep. is a spectacular yeah, gaming platform. Doing a lot of things right, so let's not be too hard on them. But please, seriously, why are you still doing weird and wonderful strange SKUs? SKUs strange things. Windows, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you know, ordering a laptop from these moron vendors is difficult enough. It's like, wh which of the following 16 CPUs would you like? Which of the following 14 memory configurations would you like? Would you like the button that switches on the light above the keyboard because we haven't figured out backlighting? Uh, it's just, guys, seriously. Well, this is where Apple still does something wrong. Well, so, sorry, does something right. It's Would you like a fi like 13, 15, or 17-inch laptop? Okay, 15. Well, do, you want a, do you want a fast one or a slower one? Cool, yeah. fast or slower. Speak done. to anybody who makes anything from Tinkies to bread to cars, and they'll tell you that for the last 80 years, we've understood very well that consumers do not like choice. No, they don't. Yeah, choice but confuses reason, consumers. Technology con vendors yeah. don't get this. No. No. Speaking of which, I do like Tinkies. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry or vanilla? <laughs> vanilla, actually. <laughs> Boys, we're moving down the completely left path here. Yeah. All right. No, but it's true. The complexity and technology tend yes. to go yeah. together. So I want to do our picks of the week. But mm. Before I do, I think we need to touch on the uncapped data price reductions that have happened in South Africa. Uh, you know, even if you're not in South Africa, our telecommunications market is a fascination to people Absolutely. in the rest of the world Absolutely. when they find out about it. <laughs> Um, so we've seen uh, ADSL, uh, uncapped ADSL specifically, uh, some slashes happening there off the back of telecom price reductions, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as as these ISPs are, are able to access uh, bandwidth from, from our incumbent network well, there, operator to I mean, cheaper the price. Most ISPs would tell you that about 80% of their fixed cost was the the IP Connect. IP Connect fee that they were paying telecom. Right. You drop that by 30%. Do the maths. It, yes. it, they could actually. Cut, they, I believe they could slash even further. Yeah. Absolutely. But as a well, first step, there's been pretty well, good slashes. Well, let's look at the prices now. and props to the guys at mybroadband.co.za yeah. because they've, as always, on top of things with a comparison of all of the prices. Absolutely. Uh, so if you look at four megabits per second uncapped ADSL, which I think is what most uh, people in South Africa, especially our listeners with ADSL, mm -hmm. would have, um, the cheapest now is OpenWeb. Funnily enough, because I remember OpenWeb when the whole uncapped thing started happening, yeah, saying that it was a bad idea. Correct. Yeah. They're now the cheapest provider of uncapped at 469 Rand a month. For bearing in mind four that you, Yeah, four yeah. Meg. Yeah. And bearing in mind that you still need to pay telecom for your line. Which is still exorbitant. Yeah, so if you're going to be paying well, that in the price order hasn't of 900 come down. Rand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's next? Access, 496 Rand. Afrihost, uh, 497 Rand. Um, 
M Web's on five hundred thirty nine rand, and Web Africa five hundred ninety nine rand, and then there are other providers. But the all vast majority place. of people are still on one meg, and that's yeah. where the pricing has got really interesting. Now, Access has got a really uh, interesting solution for if you've got ten meg, uh, if you live in in coverage areas for ten meg, they've got a one five nine yeah. nine package, which is viable for businesses, I suppose. It depends. That's not. It's gonna remember, be that's a shaped, yeah, contended one. The M Web version of that is nearly nearly four thousand rand. Yeah. The so cheapest uncapped connection now is 384 kilobits per second, of course, and it's open web at 159 rand. Yeah, well, which I really doesn't make sense yeah. when you look at it, uh, when you're paying 50 rand more for so a one meg. Yeah. The cheapest way to get one meg, I think, is uncapped. One meg is M web. I think they went. They're doing that uh, whole open web again. No, open web with the cheapest. Yeah, so they're they're all in the hundred. Yeah, bucks. they're they're all the 190 rand range nowadays yeah. or whatever. And that's because they're all expect uh, M web doesn't offer a 384k anymore. They say because telecoms looking likely to bump up three. Well, a lot to one of meg. people, a lot of people were in 384. Yeah. They just bumped them up. So to one meg. the best package until now for uncapped has been if you told telecom, I don't want four meg. I only want to pay for one meg, Correct. which was about 300 and something rand. And then you took Telcom's one meg unshaped, uh, uncapped. Correct. And you would be paying about in the order of, of just under 700 rand for one Over, meg Yeah, uncapped. for the whole thing. And their, sh their shaping really wasn't too bad either. Now, Telcom has reduced prices to ISPs that on sell, but they haven't reduced their own prices. No, they so they're still charging 369 yet. rand for one meg. Um, so that's not the case anymore. Although you have to think they'll drop their price soon. Well, apparently there's an announcement coming into this yeah. week. Oh, man, it's still so confusing. <laughs> the wheels take time to turn. The bottom line is good ADSL at home is going to cost you between 700 and 1,200 rand a month. See, I've given up at my it. house because I've got degraded copper. It yeah. doesn't um, work. And it's, well, anyway, I'm moving now, so who gives a crap? <laughs> um, <laughs> You're moving to Cape Town? Yes. When is that going to happen? my house in Joburg. Oh, and nice. And moving my family to Cape Town. This weekend. He's emigrating. This weekend? Semigrating. Semigrating. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> but at least you'll get, hopefully, you've got, well, you must buy a house with good, I mean, I'm good ADSL. I'm enjoying Cape Town now. I'm going to be doing a lot of commuting to Joburg, but I'm loving the startup scene in Cape no, Town. It is. There's it's a lot very of vibrant. Silicon Cape. Well, as I don't, it were. yeah. I love the movement. Not so keen on the <laughs> branding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. So we do our picks of the week, gents. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Steve, which phone are you picking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking the HTC One X as my no pick of the week. No surprises there. No surprises. I've been using it for two weeks now, and it is without doubt the most complete, probably the best phone I've ever used. And I'm, I like Android. I think Android's a great platform. And Android 4 Ice Cream Sandwich is smooth and slick. It's really an amazingly well-sorted device. It's going to be expensive, but it's going to be 30% cheaper than an iPhone 4S which is really interesting. Oh, really? It comes with 32 in gig South of... Africa in South Africa? In South Africa. It comes with 32 gigs of RAM, built-in, standard. You can't upgrade it, but it's built-in. Storage. Storage, Storage so, I mean. Yeah. RAM would be something. RAM's one gig. <laughs> and um, the screen is amazing. It's fast. It's just an incredible package. And it'll be around about 7,000 Rand. And apparently it's hitting the Voter World, Voter Shops on the 7, 7th of May. Yeah. So it's going to be available, and the packages are going to be good. It sounds good. The sound quality with the Beats audio is great. No, it's definitely the best phone I've ever used right now. And yeah. the overall, a package that just makes a lot of sense. Cool. Nice pick. So that's my huge no pick. No surprises, of the week. but nice. Dave no Greenway. Surprise, well, the other, is that my pick or my secondary that's pick? That's okay. My secondary pick is the Kingston SSD Now 200V solid state drive. I got one for review, popped it into uh, not my laptop, but another laptop, a uh, MacBook Pro, and wow. It is absolutely amazing. Anyone who can get away with not having more than 256 or 230, it comes out, about 230 gigs of storage, um, it's pretty well, spectacular. You know, can, I think the, the 256 gig one now is still expensive. About, it's 3,800 Rand. Yeah, there's a cheaper Retail. there's a cheaper spec though that there isn't a big anyway but well, you can get away with putting your sort of cooperational stuff on it absolutely and keeping your things like your on music an external and photography drive. libraries on external drives yeah i know it's an extra thing to carry around but the difference in day-to-day -day performance of of your machine is absolutely spectacular except i got something go so this machine's got an ssd in it uh, my pc doesn't um, but I'm having to do a MTU reset on this machine on a daily basis. There's something, it uh, feels like there's a software problem, but I don't know. Anyway. 
That's do interesting. Do a reinstall and see. Do a nice fresh reinstall and, and see what's happening. Maybe flush out the stuff every single day. That's weird. Otherwise, I get sort of weird things happening. Like Does I'm it hang and stop? Automatically and, and I'm not seeing the full advantage of the SSD. Well, give it another month. You've got a Flash brand new MacBook coming. Flash out all the memory coming. and suddenly it, I've got an SSD again. Like things are firing off immediately. And That's interesting. Day fix. <laughs> day. <laughs> I've never had that problem with the SSD and the MacBook Pro, but it's, I think it's definitely the SSD that's causing it. And I'm hoping it's not a hardware problem, but it feels like a software problem because it's too... Too erratic. Consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, so that's my second pick. <coughs> Thanks, Dave, for reminding me. That's a pleasure. All right. Dave, what's your pick? Uh, number one pick is okay. going to be Gmail, but a very strange aspect of it. I like the fact that it's powered by Microsoft Exchange. Yeah. The back end. Works well on mobile. Exactly. <laughs> Get a new phone for review, plug in all my Gmail settings, pull contacts, calendars, mail, everything down. <laughs> so what you're really picking is Microsoft Exchange. I'm Absolutely. picking Microsoft Exchange very strangely, and it's number one money earner being Gmail. So yeah. it's it's yeah because Google Pay is a license yeah. for every Gmail. But so does Apple. Funny enough, yeah, five dollars for every iPhone. Apple phone sold for the uh, Microsoft Exchange client. Yeah. So is I didn't know that. Oh, mm. for the client. For the yeah. client. Yeah. yeah. yeah for iCloud's cloud's not using yeah. Exchange. It's using no. industry standards. Correct. Yes. And Gmail, four hundred and fifty million users <laughs> each with an Exchange license. Yeah, Microsoft is such so, a happy I bunch mean, of people. While we're talking about things Microsoft does right, uh, you know, Exchange is not a bad it's way of handling your PIM. Yeah, <laughs> the best pim Pimp around. Yeah. Pimps the pim. Pim for the win. Yeah. yeah for organisational yeah. mail, and it used to suck. And thanks to Google, Microsoft had to change it. Remember the days of twenty-five meg <laughs> default mailboxes that uh, yeah, cleared well, out every ninety well, was days. Bill I Gates' mean, thing. Who would ever them. need more than twenty-five megabytes of email? Yeah, I've yeah I've <laughs> tried Gmail. I've tried A B C D and email too. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bill. Fantastic guy. Oh, anyway. Did he, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> okay. Pick so. number two is a website. It's sorryformay15.com. Uh, May okay. 15th, for anyone who's not a gaming aficionado, is the release of Diablo, Diablo 3. 3. See, there we go. See? Um, and it's really cool. <laughs> brings up a little landing page that says, sorry for May 15. And on the left says, tell my boss. And on the le right says, tell my girlfriend. You click on one of them and it generates a random excuse nice. for said person. So... Uh, sorry for oh, May 15th. Sorry I'm, for May 15th. I'm so at the moment it is, hey boss, I think it will be impossible for me to go to work today. My work clothes are broken and I have no money for repairs. Nice. So I'm wondering if how many people are going to need to say sorry on May 15th because at the moment you look at the pre-orders, I think Blitz is going to have a tough time rolling this game out on downloads. Yeah. Okay, it says, tell my boss or tell my girlfriend. So let's just tell my, my girlfriend. <laughs> hey, honey, I know we we're supposed to get married today, but I'm still looking for your ring. Can we put it off until tomorrow? <laughs> nice. That's hey, fantastic. babe, I apologize, but I doubt that we'll be able to see that you. We will be able to see us today. I like that. I lost my ear, and I'm still looking for it. Let's do a boss one. Hey, boss, I'll probably be late a bit at work today. Kane asked me to stay a while longer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nice. Fun times. I think everybody's looking forward to Diablo 3 launching <coughs> if they've got the time to play it. No more town portal. <laughs> you know, the pre-sales of Diablo 3, I think, are going to hurt Blizzard. We were chatting about this a little bit before the show as well, but they've sold so much on pre-sale, and the idea was if you pre-order it, you'll get to, to download it a little bit before they release it on mass. And now I think and so many people have pre-ordered it, yeah. it's still going to crash. It'll still crash. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Nice picks, Dave. Is that it? Yeah, that's me. Cool. Um, I'm going to pick something that is in no way new, but that I've been enjoying so much this week, and that's the um, the Transformer Prime from Asus. I don't have it with me, um, but it with really all your travels. Yeah, and you, you know the the original Transformer was an amazing Android tablet uh, with that keyboard dock that turns it into a proper laptop, and this just takes it to the next level. Uh, I think everybody knows about the GPS problem with it. I didn't notice it because I've never used the GPS on it, but. Uh, but it, apparently there's a pretty serious GPS bug. And to say sorry, Asus is sending out free GPS dongles to people. In the who US and problem. Canada. Yeah. But have you seen what the dongle looks like? It apparently plugs into the gross. dock place, it's doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like carrying around a five-inch tablet with yeah. your 10-inch I tablet. have no doubt that it works like a dream with it attached because it's so big it has to. But God, you know, People are calling it the silliest addition to the Prime ever. Well, what are you going to do? Oh, well. Just in case you need but to know GPS where you are. But GPS aside, the keyboard's a good size. The dock is much better now. The whole clipping mechanism works yeah. really well. The only thing I found iffy is the SD card slot on the side. But it could be just the unit I've been messing with. It's yeah. a little bit stuffed. Um, 
but the screen's amazing. It's by f- it's. Uh, I think it's still the most powerful tablet around, isn't it? It is. Uh, the, uh, yeah, Tegra. So it is. It's, quite it's cool. the first it's that, Tegra. Three. It's the, the same process yeah. as in this phone. And it's a small thing that really makes it rock when you got it in laptop mode, and that's the mouse pad and having yeah. a cursor on Android is surprisingly useful. Yeah, it works well, especially when you're editing documents and stuff. So if you're the kind of person who can survive on Google Docs and Evernote and cloud services, yeah, cloud services basically, then the Transformer Prime's a pretty viable laptop. I know John Tullett, for example, that's what he uses. It's his yeah. production machine. Um, and I've really been enjoying it. Uh, if you can get around Android, which still has a long way to go on the tablet front, I think, um, it's really nice. I like, And the battery is unbelievable. Yeah. <coughs> it's like 10 hours and then the another keyboard adds something. another... No, the keyboard like adds another 20 or something. It's, <laughs> I'm so serious. I went it through a week. Okay, I wasn't charging. using it heavily, but I went through a week without charging it. It was insane. That's why battery life, going back to Ivy Bridge, the big thing of battery life is a huge differentiator. When a laptop hits 10, 12 hours battery life, it makes a big difference to your life. That's why I'm waiting for that Asus pad phone because it's the dock charges the tablet charges the phone and if you're gonna if you really want a convergent device then you know if you're one of those people that I can't carry more than one thing then you're technically carrying three versions of one thing that does everything so we'll see yeah well that's my pick Uh, I've been using it and loving it they're being sued by Hasbro (laughs) I think they lost that one though because there's a new line of Transformer toys like they released a new Transformers Prime thing and they're very upset that you know someone else is using that yeah, I thought it was pretty cute that they were using those names, but yeah. seriously. I really want it every time you open up the dock or whatever and it resumes from sleep or something, it <laughs> needs to make the Transformers noise, but alas, no. That would no. be funny. That would be pretty rare. I alas, think that no. would Hasbro be another lawsuit bad. of note. Well, it would be cool if they'd gotten Hasbro on board for this whole thing. Exactly. That's Tron- true. Former actual Transformer with, like, oh, yeah. man. Oh, <laughs> can drive them to work. The gamification <laughs> of tablets. <laughs> oh. All right. I think so with that geek. said... Yeah. With that said, we'll uh, we'll cork it. <coughs> Somebody in the chat room pointing out before we go that the Blizzard download is a torrent client. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. So once you get a critical mass of people with the game client, you, you you're good to go. You're humming along. Mm. Although I found with the beta, because I've been playing the beta of Diablo 3, most of my downloads have come from the Blizzard server. Maybe just because yeah. there aren't enough beta Lower guys percentage. in my geo. Last, although this weekend when they opened it up public, that... Uh, like uh, the sort of torrenting client part right. of it must have gone insane. I mean, I couldn't log on from Thursday yeah. onwards. It was just Is there still painful. such bad spell lag? I haven't played for three weeks. I don't know. I wasn't able to play this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I right. tried hard. Okay. Let's call it a night then. Got through a hell of a lot of stuff tonight. Sheesh. Well done. <laughs> to us mm. oh, walking absolutely. out in homework <laughs> well done us <laughs> 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 that's what I'd give well us well done yeah absolutely <laughs> there we go. self-grading thanks for being us Stephen Ambrose it's a pleasure At thanks for having me on Twitter you can follow me and I'm now writing a couple of reviews for techhuman.com okay, so cool. if you want to check those out and you'll find me and my words all over that place lekker Dave Greenway at Indeed. David Greenway, right? At Dave Greenway. At Dave Greenway. Yeah, David was taken. I rue that. Bone. Yes, I remember we've had this discussion yes. before. I don't like him. Thanks for being here, dude. Pleasure, man. Good as always. 100%. Somebody who understands what he's talking <laughs> about. It's always nice. <laughs> and I'm Simon Dingle, uh, at Simon Dingle. Thanks for watching or uh, listening if you were streaming live or however you got hold of our netcast podcast online broadcast thingy i'm gonna go with netcast whatever cost leo's the president of the internet and he calls them netcasts so we'll president go with that. Of the internet. I yes. like that title. <laughs> hi what do you do i'm the president of the internet yeah. so we'll be back next week and uh that's us cheers bye for now <laughs>